Do you believe sex toys should be sold in supermarkets? Crazy thought, huh? Hi, this is Liana, Holistic Intimacy Coach. Welcome back to my channel. Here, I help you get your orgasmic intimacy. I got a hot topic today, which I found out about online. But before I get into it, I want to remind you of the resources for getting your orgasmic intimacy. First of all, get your orgasmic intimacy ebook. It's on Kindle, Amazon, quick, short book, strategic book that helps you answer some of the burning questions that you have. And it does that through coaching client anecdotes, 22 of those coaching exercises or experiments, 56 of those, and obviously general presentations from a coaching perspective or a growth perspective. The second tool that I have is the dojo where I have five intimacy programs. One of them is for women's practices only practical program. Like the title says, the other one is a coaching approach to growth. It's filled with practices that anybody can practice. And the other three programs are around intimate touch, women, feminine, intimate touch, masculine, intimate touch, and breasts touch. You can choose from any of those. Enjoy them. Lastly, I opened up a Patreon account where I upload audio practices. Those are embodiment practices. So the foundations to showing up in your life blissfully, and they are both in Romanian and in English. Check that out and let me know what you think. Now back to our topic. I recently became aware that in the UK, shops like Sephora, Sainsbury's or Tesco sell adult accessories. I immediately pulled my top three communities, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram about this topic. Should these accessories be sold in supermarkets? The answers varied, as you can see here. I rarely share posts from one platform to another, so each of my social media accounts has a different audience. Therefore, the varied responses. I also got two questions. The first one was, what's my opinion? Personally and professionally, I don't particularly mind if these accessories appear in supermarkets. Every business is free to sell whatever products it deems appropriate. At the same time, I would not buy anything from the supermarket except for food, cleaning products, soap, toothpaste, etc. I do not buy clothes, jewelry, perfume, medicines, or intimate accessories from the supermarket. A story that brings everything together cannot provide the variety of products needed by people I'm not a fan of giant industries, which need to standardize everything. You don't make much of a profit from small series productions. My pet peeve is when large numbers of people are shoveled into personal development. Personal development is not compatible with large groups or large productions. I call that collective development, not personal development. Throughout this process of standardizing production, there is a dumbing down of the buyer. This happens in any field that takes what is typically done in a small group or series to large scale mass production. Of course, as a person, I prefer small groups, smaller spaces. I'm not fond of industrial halls. So I prefer things that are produced in small series or even unique. At the same time, I'm not ashamed to go into sex shops. Many women still have that shame and that's worth noting. In supermarkets, it is supposed to be not so embarrassing as it's perceived to be to go into sex shops. Here, it would be a white ball for supermarkets. It would clean up the negative public perception. The second question, how is it embarrassing for women to enter sex shops? In my opinion, because from here only can I pronounce myself. First of all, it is the subject itself in social groups business groups or any other work groups, it's not acceptable or respectable to talk about sex. No matter how much we say the opposite on social media, 
If you're ever seen walking in or out of a sex shop by someone from the above groups, even today, you would feel a bit exposed or embarrassed. I'm not sure if you can have gossip around you, but I would guess so. Indeed, I had this experience in the environmental association I had founded. Question marks inside and around the association related to my coaching work in this field. That's why I chose to leave back in 2017. Then there's the look of sex shops. Many products are still hard to come by, visually speaking. The packaging, the displayed images and gathering of so many products in one place are challenging for many women to be in there. It's one thing to be alone at home in front of a screen, but it's another to be in a store, possibly with other people. You can be photographed, etc. Last but not least, the judgments around going to such places or buying related products. It's not as it is with shoes or bags. In the minds of many women, they are serious high quality and they wouldn't be appreciated or respected as much if they were seen in sex shops. How many famous ambassadors, directors, politicians or artists have you seen going to these stores? Not many, right? Come to think of it, neither men nor women in these positions are caught in sex shops. It would ruin the public image beyond repair. For some, it could be a reason for firing. Do remember here that when shopping online, most people will not want explicit images or brands shown on the delivery packages. 99% want and demand that their containers be as discreet as possible. Sex and all related topics are not considered respectable. Even if the subject is everywhere in entertainment and social media, people are still afraid to be associated with this topic. And you still run the risk of being adversely affected. Why? Because it's not highly regarded, not even understandable. And here I have direct experience, unfortunately, to talk about sex or be associated with that. In my opinion, all of these make women embarrassed to go into sex shops or go to events, be they for personal growth, or be in any way associated with people who work in sexuality related fields. So what's your opinion? I'd love to know what you think of this. Should sex toys be sold in supermarkets? Yes, no, drop a comment. And remember the resources that I have, you can purchase them from the comfort of your own home. Nobody's gonna see you buying the ebook, Get Your Orgasmic Intimacy. Nobody's gonna see you interacting with my online programs, but you get to do the practices and benefit from the results. And with the audio practices on Patreon, that one is actually clean. It's embodiment practices. It's overall practices to help you be more in connection with your body, understand its signals, work your way to positive emotions and states through your body. So, Check those out and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.